When the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was sending two of his companions to Yemen for inviting to Islam, he told them to look after one another, since they would be far from Medina and the Prophet. And so they would visit each other and inquire about each other's good deeds to ensure that both were remaining consistent. In the absence of a supportive environment, supporting one another becomes vital to our growth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى Help one another to do what is right and good. In this verse, we see that two things are being emphasized, doing good and helping one another. In other words, good deeds and community. And for this very reason, many people look forward to Ramadan. They see an environment of good deeds taking place in the masjid. Not only that, the various events in the masjid, such as iftars, taraweeh, qiyamul layl, i'tikaf, they all foster a sense of community. One brother said, if Jumu'ah is the day that brings the worshippers together, Ramadan is the month that brings the entire community together. But as we're all aware, this won't be the case this Ramadan. However, that doesn't mean that we can't continue to help one another in doing good. And so here are some ways that we can help one another, especially those of us who are isolated. We can wake each other up. Number one, we can wake each other up for suhoor or tahajjud. Sending a message or a missed call can be very helpful when nights are short and we're feeling tired. Plus, by waking them up, you will earn the reward and blessings of their suhoor or tahajjud. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, May Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon a man who wakes up at night and prays and awakens his wife to do the same. And then he mentioned the same for the wife who wakes up at night and prays and awakens her husband. Now, we all may not be married, but the lesson to take from the hadith is how Allah Ta'ala loves when His servants help one another in being obedient to Him Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Number two, we can read Quran with one another to stay consistent. As Ramadan passes, it's easy to burn out or become lazy. But we can support each other by setting a time daily when we sit together over video and recite Quran. This way, it isn't as easy for shaitan to overpower us. As we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help is with the group. Number three, we can read a book together. In isolation, many of us have realized that our previous excuse of not enough time is not the reason we haven't been reading or learning as much as we'd like. Often it's just because we don't have the discipline. By sitting and reading together, we're able to remain focused, engaged, and even have lively conversations about what we read. And number four, we can listen to lectures together. This would be our alternative to Netflix watch parties. You know, learning was something of utmost importance to the companions. Imam Bukhari, may Allah have mercy on him, has recorded how Sayyiduna Umar, may Allah be well pleased with him, made an agreement with his neighbor to take turns learning for, from the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. And so one would go to work while the other would attend the lesson. And the next day they would switch roles and in between they would share with one another what they had learned. Like this, they made sure they didn't miss any knowledge shared in the Prophet's lessons. And so by sitting together and helping one another, we can grow together. And we can ensure that this Ramadan not only increases our connection with Allah, but also increases our connection with each other.